Next up is Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're here at Crown Hyundai in St. Pete, Florida, because guess what? We have that all new truck everybody's talking about. This is it. This is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. But before we get into this compact truck, let's talk about what's going on here. Hyundai. They have been doing the business as of late, bringing some vehicles to market that is simply outdoing the competition. When you think about the Palisade, when you think about the redesigned 2022 Tucson, the refresh of the Santa Fe, the Veloster N, the Elantra and Elantra N, so many great models, so many great trims. The Santa Cruz now is their first official truck. And with the compact truck market, yes, the compact truck market making a mighty return, Hyundai might have struck gold here at the perfect time. Now, remember, when we look at trucks, trucks have come in all different sizes over the years. There was once upon a time where you had full size and you had compact. Many of the trucks that you know of today, the Tacoma, the Ranger, the Frontier, the Colorado, those were all once smaller size trucks, but they have grown to be mid-sized. So that has opened up the return of this segment of the truck population. Now, Santa Cruz right now has one competitor and one competitor only. That is going to be the new for 2022 Ford Maverick. The return of a, of a classic name from Ford, but in a totally different wrapper. This Santa Cruz though, is taking a lot of that design philosophy that they're bringing to the Palisade, the Tucson, so on and so forth, to really kind of spark some excitement, but also bring that truck versatility. But let's go ahead, let's find out with our Santa Cruz, is this the compact truck to buy over the Ford Maverick, making that return with the name? But like I said, in a new compact truck wrapper, let's find out with our Santa Cruz, which way you should go. Right off the bat, styling. It falls perfectly in alignment with the rest of the Hyundai family. Starting at the front of the business, you're gonna get that split level headlight design. And just like the 2022 Tucson, you're getting that very intricate, detailed daytime running lamp. So you're gonna have your LED daytime running lamps that flow into the actual grill philosophy. And that really is making a unique design but also giving it some brand identity. Now, working your way down, you are gonna have that separate projector beam headlight. I like the way they kind of have the actual housing itself not be just a perfect rectangle. They're giving it that nice, unique, distinct style, just like up top. On our SEL trim, you're gonna have flat black with this metallic silver, and like I said, the LED Daytime running lamps, really looking good. Now, as we come across that center grill, super size on the Hyundai badge. Remember, it goes all the way back to the 1980s here in the United States. You're gonna get that metallic silver in the center portion of the grill on the SEL trim. And I think with our particular black Santa Cruz, it pops very nicely, fully functional up top, working your way down. We go flat black, which I think is smart. That's gonna take a better beating and it is also functional, and they give it a nice stylish lip in the center area. But definitely, if you did not know that this had a bed attached to it, you would think you were looking at a Tucson, and that's not a bad thing. Now, when you get up onto that low slung hood, I like the way it's got a nice fold, meets the grill, very clean, and then the body lines, everything's gonna kinda rise up and then go right towards the windshield. Now, what's interesting is that this made its debut back in 2015 as a concept car at the Detroit Auto Show. That's a little fun fact for you. Coming around the bend, if you're looking at the front and you're comparing it to the Maverick, definitely the Santa Cruz is the more futuristic design. The Maverick takes more of a classic squared off hard edge truck design that Ford is synonymous with. Now, when we come around the bend, you are gonna get some stylish flat black fender treatment. Normally fenders flare out. On the, center, on the Santa Cruz, it actually tucks in. Interesting how they take that design with the triangles from the grill, bring it around the fender treatment, that flat black. Looks good with our gloss black paint job. And then as we drop down on the SEL trim, I'm very happy to report, 
you're gonna get 18 inch wheels. Remember, this is not a top trim. Top trim is gonna be limited, but on SEL, you're gonna get this beautiful 18 inch wheel. I love the machined aluminum intricate parts to it. The rest is gonna be like a nice satin black. And if you're wondering, Joe, what's the size of this tire? You're looking at 245 on the width, 60 series sidewall. Just like the Maverick, it comes standard front wheel drive. The big difference is though, the Maverick comes standard as a hybrid. This does not have a hybrid option whatsoever, but it is front wheel drive standard. It's $1,500 option if you wanna add all wheel drive to the SEL and lower trims. Limited trim comes standard with all wheel drive, but I like the amount of gap between the top of the tire inside the fender. And like I said, having that unique fender kind of tuck in just really separates it from the rest of the pack. Now, as we slide down the rest of the vehicle, you can see how that hard body line kind of fades away, drops down into the driver's side door. You're gonna get color matched on the mirror caps, slim and trim on those LED turn singles. And then I really like the overall dimensions. They didn't go too triangular-ish like the Tucson. So you are gonna have some unique body lines here. The way it drops down from the mirror housing right above the door handle, and then you'll notice that other body line kind of fades away as it goes back towards the front fender. SEL trim comes with flat black door handles, which the great news is, with these door handles, it actually blends in pretty well with our particular paint job. On the low end, you're gonna have that nice distinct body line, and I do like the way they took the lower portion of the sills and wrapped it underneath. This really gives it such a more stylish, intricate detail compared to the Ford Maverick. Working your way to the back, this portion here really reminds me of the first gen Honda Ridgeline. And if you're comparing this to a new Ridgeline, you can't. The reason why is the Ridgeline is a midsize truck. It's actually one of the larger midsize trucks. But this rear pillar here, if you look at a first gen Ridgeline really mimics that design. You can see how you have a nice low roof spoiler extension that is flat black, body color matched on the shark fin antenna. But I really think that this design in this area really showcases that truck unique style. And then the back portion, of course, you're gonna have that same fender flare tucked in. You can see how the fender flare actually flares inward, but the actual fender has a nice bulge to it as we come towards the rear of the bed of the truck. Now the big zonk, if you're comparing this to the Maverick, is this has the shorter bed, four and a half feet about, give or take an inch, whereas with the Maverick, you're getting a five foot bed. So that's something to think about when you're comparing loading size, payload size, from the Santa Cruz to the uh, Maverick. But as we come around the back, you're gonna get this beautiful LED light design Love the way they put that intricate detail and the way it flows nicely into the actual bed of the truck, the tailgate. And then even though this truck is very low, you do have a nice step here to get things in and out of. And I think one of the things I really like is how high the side of the bed is compared to the Maverick. That allows you to have some taller things in there and there's still gonna be plenty of sheet metal to keep everything nice and tidy in. As we come to the back, you got the Hyundai, name stamped into that top handle area to lower the tailgate. You got Santa Cruz, super clean. I'm glad they didn't put any emblems, decals, none of that junk, kept it super clean. And as we work our way down, look, look at how they took the triangular design, put it everywhere on this lower bumper area. And you have your full towing capability. Here's my favorite, 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 favorite part. So you hit that button, nice soft release. We have a bed liner all composite, super clean. If you go higher trim, you can get LED bed lighting. We have our tie down locations, which are great, both in the floor of the bed and also on the sides. But watch this, hocus pocus, one, two, three, boom. Just like the Ridgeline, you actually have a beautiful storage area that could also be turned into a cooler. You could drain the water right there in that lower left-hand corner with that plug. This really opens up the versatility. This is something you're not gonna be able to get on the Maverick. And there is your full trailer hitch towing capability with that whole hook up there. But this is all lockable, sealable, ready to rock and roll.
But let's go ahead, let's pop the hood of our 2022 Santa Cruz and see what's powering. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod. The great news is it's all the way out of the way on the passenger side. Underneath that hood, tasteful engine cover. Very, very clean setup. What are we looking at, though, when we're looking at power of this SEL trim Santa Cruz? You're looking at the standard engine, 2.5 liter, inline four, naturally aspirated engine, 191 horsepower, 181 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a conventional torque converter, eight-speed automatic transmission. So thank you, Hyundai, for doing that. Unlike the standard Maverick, like I said, the standard Maverick comes with a hybrid setup and it has a CVT transmission. And we all know how I feel about those. MPGs with the base engine is gonna be 21 the city, 26 on the highway. The truck in front wheel drive form weighs 3,750 pounds. You can tow with this vehicle 3,500 pounds. If you get the more powerful engine set up, then you could tow more with it. But 3,500 pounds, and like I said, four trims, and the great news is you can option all-wheel drive even on this SEL trim, but while we go ahead, let's get to the even bigger picture. Let's see what this compact truck known as the Santa Cruz is bringing on the inside. All right, guys, we're inside the 2022 Santa Cruz, that compact truck. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I have been waiting for this truck. I've been looking at pictures on the Google and the interwebs all about it ever since I was first seen at the Detroit Auto Show as a concept vehicle. Looks just like the concept. I'm really liking it. How much is it? So this is an SEL trim. Actually, with those 18-inch wheels, the base engine front wheel drive, you're looking at an MSRP right around $29,000. Remember, you can go higher with a limited trim. You could also go lower, but let's see what you get for your money to the door panels. Absolutely love the style super clean now the bad news is it's hard plastic up top so i am going to zonk that it would have been nice to have some soft material to rest your arm up top but i do like the way they did the silver with the gloss black it's nothing too heavy the rest of the door panel is all going to be just flat black hard plastic the good news is no fingerprints the bad news is it just feels a little bit on the cheaper side of things now the armrest is a uh, rubber style material and it does have some nice softness to it and then you do have a door pocket there where you could put a bottle of yoo -Hoo and maybe a super thick chocolate chip cookie that your great grandmother bakes for you every time you go to work going from the door panel to the dash just like in the tucson they bring the style from the door panel to this top portion of the dash i do like the way they hide the ac vents super duper clean you also have soft touch material up top, which is a nice welcome. And then everything flows into the infotainment side of things. Now on the SEL trim, you're gonna get standard eight inch. If you go higher up the trims, you can get that 10.25 inch infotainment set system set up. Now, looking at the system, very easy to use. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, touch screen capability, nice swipe features. You have that quiet mode, which Exactly what it says, when quiet mode is selected, radio media is played only in the front seats. All volume levels above seven will be decreased to seven automatically. That's for when the kids are sleeping in their car seats in the back, but very, very easy to use. Let me show you the backup camera. Pretty good resolution, and the great news is it almost takes up all eight inches. The bad news is, is that a lot of touching around the screen, you're gonna to be touching gloss black. So there is gonna be some fingerprints, so we are gonna zonk that, but I do like the way they have the little tumbler wheels for tuning and volume. You got start stop button on the SEL trim, and then you're gonna get your standard AC controls, blower and temperature. Look at the details though. They put a little truck for the recirculating button. They put a little pickup truck, since this is a little pickup truck. Makes sense. Dropping down, you have a nice large cubby for peanut M&Ms, and then you're gonna get, let me move the shifter out of the way, USBs, two of them, and a 12 volt. They always do such a great job at Hyundai with the connectivity, plus with the peanut M&M tray. This is gonna control that eight speed automatic. The style of it is actually really, really nice. And I know a lot of people miss actual shifters. So this is nice to have an actual shift lever. You got two cup holders with some gloss black. Here is our Hyundai key fob. I'm gonna 
break the rules and peel that out of the way real quick. There's the badge. Flip it around. You got the ability to drop the rear tailgate and remote start, which is nice. Hill, uh, hill descent control. You got your different modes, which I'll show you when you come to the business side of things. And you have heated seats in the SEL trim. Now there is an SEL convenience premium package, which really I think is the best way to go, but we'll be bringing that to you when they get it here at Crown Hyundai. I like the soft material with the stitch work. Hit the button, pops open, look at that. You could easily go to Santa Cruz, go to the beach and put at least, I would say 25 seashells in there or a five pound bag of sand if you wanna bring some Santa Cruz sand home and like keep that on your desk and uh, reminisce about being at the beach and a seagull taking a crap on you while you were sunbathing. Seats, they are cloth in the SEL trim, but it's a nice durable material. And I do like the simple design that goes down the center, manual seat controls for the passenger. I have full electric assist over here, which is wonderful. Plenty of headroom. I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom in a compact truck. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of the Santa Cruz. All right, guys, here we are, business end of the Santa Cruz. One thing I wanted to point out, which I normally don't a lot, are the floor mats. It's actually a really nice carpet quality, and I think that the Santa Cruz name looks so clean down there. You do have a large dead pedal area, which is great for those longer drives and also for bracing yourself. If you do get the all-wheel drive one and maybe you go off-road, there's your electric seat, seat controls, easy to get to, that lower lumbar. Seats actually feel pretty supportive. I'm actually liking the seats a little bit more in the Santa Cruz than I did when I was sitting in the Maverick. Steering wheel on an SEL though, you are getting that rubber style material. Now the good news is, is that it's easy to clean and it's gonna age well. The bad news is it feels like rubber, but if you want the more stylish steering wheel, this is the one over the Maverick. You got a little bit of gloss black on your switch gear, and then it is manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Gauges are gonna be analog with a small four inch digital display. So you have analog speedo, coolant, gas, and tachometer, and then the center there, you could scroll through a whole plethora of information, which is really, really great. Plus you got the different modes. Right now we're in sport. You got smart if you wanna boost your IQ, and you could, Staying normal, but who wants to be normal? On Rady's Rides, we're going sport with a little bit of a checkered flag action. Like I was saying, comparing this to the Maverick, you're gonna get a little bit more of a 21st century feel in this vehicle compared to the Ford. But let's get to the back seat and see how comfy your passengers are gonna be in the Santa Cruz. Right, guys, back seat time. And what I did was I actually lifted part of the back seat because I wanna show you this awesome storage bin that's located over the under the rear passenger seats really allow you to have that flexibility that if you're being told by people that you need to lay off the Twinkies, hide the Twinkies underneath there. You could easily put a few boxes and then when nobody's looking, enjoy your golden brown delicious cream filled treat all to yourself. But the seats are very, very light, easy to move, lock in. And what's surprising is I was a little concerned Based off of the shape of the Santa Cruz, which is pretty sporty, I thought it was gonna be tight back here. It's phenomenal. Tons of head space, tons of leg room. The one thing that is a bummer is you're gonna get cloth all the way around the back, but you do have pockets on both sides. So you could easily put a back scratcher, an abacus, maybe a calculator, have those back there. The zonk though is they don't even give you a 12 volt. They give you an area where you know on the higher trims, that you're gonna be able to get some connectivity, but there's no connectivity in the back seat for your passengers. And I know that this isn't the top trim, but this is SEL and it is $29,000. So they could at least give you two cans and a piece of string to talk to your friends. But comfort is great back here. Ah, I tried, there's no armrest. As, as much as I pull, there's no armrest. So that to me is another zonk even on the SEL trim. Like I said, this is a $30,000 truck. Yes, $29,000 and change, but when you do taxes, tag, title, registration, fees, tire disposal, battery disposal fees, it's gonna be over $30,000, but would have been nice to have a, uh, a center armrest here for your passengers. But let's go ahead. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's put this in sport mode and go on throttle on the Santa Cruz. All right, guys, we're leaving Crown Hyundai. We're in this 2022 Santa Cruz 
SEL trim. Right away, I'm very, very impressed with what they have done room-wise in this vehicle. The layout of the controls are easy to understand and they make sense. Yeah, there's a bit of gloss black, but I mean, on an overcast day, it's not so bad glare-wise and uh, you are just gonna have to you know, clean, clean your car a little bit on the inside to get rid of those fingerprints. But visibility out the front is phenomenal. Out the back window, same story, nice and large. All you do see is just the tops of those rear headrests, but very comfortable seating position, especially for the driver since in the SEL trim, you do have the electric assist on the, uh, the seat controls. I do have it in sport mode. And one thing I'm noticing is, is that there is a little bit of noise coming from that naturally aspirated 2.5 liter inline four engine. But the great news is, is that the eight speed automatic shifts very, very smoothly, especially with it being um, front wheel drive set up in this truck. And when you do go into sport mode, remember that is gonna adjust the throttle sensitivity. It's also gonna adjust um, how the transmission and the engine behaves with one another. But not having the digital dash, I don't think is a big letdown. The way they did the gauge uh, instrumentation is, is very, very smartly laid out. I mean, it's super clean, easy to read. And if you want your digital display, you just gotta go higher uh, trim level, that's all. All right guys, taking it on the highway. I'm telling you, this is the type of truck for people who really think they want a truck, but a traditional truck is not gonna make them happy. It's very easy to drive, super smooth, and actually fairly quiet in here, to be honest with you. I'm very, very impressed with that, especially with this being their first year for the Santa Cruz. But uh, I think style-wise, they really hit the nail on the head, making it unique making it look different. You have your blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist. You got your attention level alert system in here. So you are getting all the safety features that you need and want in today's driving world. And I, I think with the size, like I said, same thing, you know, for somebody who wants that ability to throw things into the back of a truck, but yet don't want a super size vehicle, uh, or don't need this you'll be able to park in your in your garage no problem parking will be a piece of cake just like driving a tucson it's almost like a tucson in a bed and with a bed and i mean that in a very very good way very curious to think uh to see what you think about is this like an el camino tucson do you feel that way um or do you think that the compact truck segment uh deserves some attention and some credit for, uh, for bringing back that smaller size uh, truck. All right, guys, let's do some on-throttle acceleration from a dead stop with sport mode on. On-throttle, here we go. Gets the traction down to the ground, very clean, very smooth shifts. Handling is nice, look at this. Very, very smooth. On the brakes. I'm telling you, this vehicle, this Santa Cruz actually drives really, really nice. I'm very, very impressed with what they have done, especially with their first time out in the compact truck segment. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into normal mode because what happens is in that sport mode, the transmission holds on to that gear. Let's just do a nice little cruise in normal mode and see how that changes. See, now it's downshifting and keeping the revs a little bit lower there. So we're doing around 50 miles an hour and turning 2000 RPM. Nice and quiet in here, comfortable, and you have the versatility of the truck bed. And in this black finish, absolutely, really I think elevates the overall look and feel of this Santa Cruz. Let's go ahead and go on throttle in normal mode, see how that goes. On throttle, here we go. Nice, I'm telling you, the eight speed shifts, very, very smooth. Remember, if you go Maverick, that also uh, comes with an eight speed automatic. If you go with the two liter EcoBoost engine, if you go hybrid, 
it's only going with the CVT transmission. So definitely from a lower trim standpoint, this driving experience is a lot better. Obviously fuel economy is gonna be a big separator between the hybrid and this 2.5 liter. But uh, you know, I, I think for the price point with all the stuff, you're, you're definitely getting a lot of vehicle for the money. The great news is driving this truck, as you can see in a very high traffic situation, is wonderful. Side mirrors are a great size and uh, definitely visibility is perfect in this in this pickup truck. But uh, hopefully this gave you an overall feel of what the Santa Cruz is bringing to the truck market. We're gonna get back to Crown Hyundai and wrap this one up so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a great day here at Crown Hyundai. I definitely want to thank Steven and the rest of the crew getting us access to their very first Santa Cruz. Very interesting truck. I'm very curious to know which way would you go? Would you go with the Santa Cruz? Would you go with the new Ford Maverick? Those are your two compact truck choices. I really think that Hyundai did it smart with taking that design philosophy from their other models and bringing it to the Santa Cruz to really make it a standout. But like I said, so curious to know which way you would be spending your money. But if you wanna keep seeing trucks on Randy's Rides, put a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Randy's Rides family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the first link, become a Radies Rise Patreon member. Click the second link in the description, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Gotta give it up to the queen of the camera. I know what truck she would go with out of the choices, a Ram TRX. So that's how Lori does it. The muscle behind the camera, she loves some muscle underneath the hood. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.